No worry, I'm gonna edit this part of the video out where I forgot to button my shirt up. Everybody says this shirt looks like pajamas, but it's not. I get that fucked. Why do I got a sponge on the table? Interesting. I talk about the implications about midway through this uh, video. I wanted to talk about uh, speed of light and the implications if it were to be taught in schools because when you actually realize something, you know, like a big secret that anybody with an inquiring mind anyway uh, would have the answer to, it's like now that I have the answer, that raises a whole new set of questions. And that is always the case. We've found out things throughout human history and uh, while we're happy to find out the truth about something, that's not unfortunately. It's like, well, if this is the case, now then we have a whole different set of circumstances that shed new light on basically everything. And especially that's true of anything that's foundational, including the speed of light. Very importantly, the speed of light. Now, this is not my position. This is their position, the folks of quantum and relativity, which those two things together are nothing more than atomism. By the way, it's a belief system. Das Liquant, yeah? As uh, uh, Herr Einstein called it, yeah, das Liquant. And uh, I'm going to say in Einstein's uh, uh, English, German accent in English, it says, uh, Together we cannot understand the nature of light um, as a particle or as a wave. But uh, together, as a wave particle duality, you know, it's basically it says it makes sense, which of course is ridiculous. There's no duality. In nature, there cannot be a duality. And scientists love to talk about waves. I've spoken about this endlessly. They reify a concept or an attribute. No one would think that you were anything other than totally insane if you said, and I've said this many times before, if you said you saw happiness walking down the street. They're like, what? Who did you see that was happy down the street? I said, oh, no, I saw happiness itself. It's like, well, you're crazy. Are you off your meds? This is no different than talking about waves because a wave is not a thing. Rather, a wave is what something um, does. There's no such thing as a wave. Anyway, I know what they're talking about, the transverse oscillation of electromagnetism around the coaxial longitudinal rarefaction and compression that is the coaxial, which is nothing other than a compounded ether perturbation modality. Compounded meaning it is made up of two different types of fields. One manifests the other, and as the other one fades away, the other one rarefies, and as that uh, compresses, then the other one manifests. So it's this uh, inseparable yin and yang. Actually, the reciprocation in the coaxial circuit of light, which we call wavelength or frequency, is we're looking at a conjugate system in the nature of light. And light, of course, is nature's most fundamental ether modality, even though is compounded. Actually, nature's most fundamental ether modality is magnetism. Magnetism, of course, is a dielectric field. But the most simplex and certainly the most common ether perturbation modality, which is all a field is, is light. You actually have the reverberating rarefactions and, uh, excuse me, the rarefactions and compressions give way to the transverse, and they are toroidal. They exist as frequencies. You just have this manifesting and demanifesting toroid around this rarefaction and compression propagation that is light. That sounds complicated, but it's actually divinely simple. But there's implications to seeing the correct nature of light. When I talk about light doesn't have a speed, it has a rate of induction. Uh, this is the hysteresis of the ether. It's the maximum speed at which something can actually saturate. This is the hysteresis of the ether. Like if I take this sponge and everybody's done this with a sponge, you actually compress it and you stick it down in hot water or whatever water and you let it go, the maximum rate that the water can saturate through the sponge, you know, of course, there's countless different permutations and uh, densities on the sponge, but there's a, a general rate at which water will soak towards the center of the sponge. That's no different than talking about light. And people make a mistake all the time. They'll say something in the ether. They'll say magnetism in the ether or light in the ether. And that, of course, is not the case. There's no light in the ether or magnetism in the ether. They are nothing other than manifestations, i.e. ether perturbation modalities of the ether. 
They're not in the ether. They are of the ether itself. Can't exist any other way. Nikola Tesla famously said that light can be nothing other than a sound wave in the ether. I've had and read, excuse me, a lot of people talk about this, this quote from Tesla, but people, I'm not seeing a single person that is connected two and two on that simple quote from Nikola Tesla. I said, well, Nikola Tesla said uh, light's a sound wave. What are the implications of that? Because we all have the idea of the speed of sound, but sound doesn't have a speed because it's not an emission. It's a rate of induction, exactly like light is. Nothing emits sound. Sure it does. So you have the speed of sounds, you know. But that's the rate of induction of a perturbation of the medium of sound, which of course is a disturbance of oxygen and nitrogen. That's the maximum rate at which sound occurs. And it is not fixed. The so-called speed of light is no more fixed than is the speed of sound. Sound's uh, speed or rate of induction or hysteresis of the oxygen and nitrogen as against itself changes depending on the density of the air, i.e. the altitude you're at, also to changes, and it's also too density related, on the temperature of the air. And it's the same true of light. Light, or C, is not fixed. And it's no fixed at all. It depends on the medium at which the disturbance is occurring, because light is not an emission and neither is sound. Now I'll get to the implications here in just a second of this. But like light, for example, when the disturbance encounters water, or when it encounters glass, it radically slows down. Well, that light was fake. Or like Chernikov radiation. It's that uh, eerie blue light that people see in, a, uh, in uh, the center of a nuclear reactor, which is traveling faster than light. And they say, they've been saying for ages, decades and decades, well, nothing travels faster than light. So what about Chernikov radiation? Well, it was already traveling. <laughs> this is literally what they say. They say, well, it's not breaking the... Uh, the uh, the speed of light barrier because it was already going faster than the speed of light to begin with therefore it's not breaking see it was already above the speed barrier of light which is just ridiculous nonsense it's just completely asinine anyway this rate of induction is the maximum rate at which a field modality can saturate into its own disturbance through the medium of the medium because the disturbance is also the medium you know have you ever seen um, it, well, everybody has, of course, have you ever seen, you know, a glass of ice water. You know, you got this jug of water with a bunch of ice cubes floating in it, right? So, well, I got ice in the water. It's like, no, the ice is the water. <laughs> it's a different expression of water. Same is true of any other ether perturbation modality. It's not in the ether. It is of the ether. It is not something different then. It's a different modality. Everything, of course, is pressure mediation in Mother Nature, so... Um, this is the hysteresis of the ether. Now let's get to the implications. But first, let's talk about what light is not, because every human being suffers the same nonsense because you were taught it, I was taught it, but I knew better. I knew my teachers were full of nonsense. High school, college, well, light has a speed. We call this the speed of light. It's blah, 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 X number of kilometers per second. You know, let's say it's a wave. Or let's say it's a particle, i.e. a photon. Let's say it's an emission. Or light is a wave-particle duality, which is complete rubbish. There are no dualities in nature. It's not a speed. There can't be any dualities in nature. Light is not an emission. Every person on this earth, literally than, you know, other than me and a handful of other people, think that when you flip a, a switch on the wall that you know, the light bulb is emitting light. Light bulb is no more emitting light than a person in the middle of a pond flapping their arms is emitting anything. When I talk and the microphone diaphragm vibrates, which creates an electrical signal which travels through this cable, I am not emitting anything. I'm creating a disturbance in the medium. I'm burning calories, which move my vocal cords, which actually causes a vibration in the air with a set frequency, wavelength and amplitude. Light, exactly like Tesla said, is nothing other than a sound wave in the ether. But every human being suffers the delusion that if something has a speed, then therefore it is moving from hya to hya. And that's not the case. What would happen, let's get to the important part, which is the part of this video, if we had a correct understanding of the nature of light? And before going to the implications of this, let me again emphasize <clears throat> 
that the people of quantum and of relativity, not my opinion, what they in their own words tell everybody, everything of quantum is based upon our understanding of the nature of light. Unquote. Their words, not mine. But since everything that they tell you that light is, a wave, a particle, a duality, an emission, it has a speed, is incorrect, then this means the entire foundation, or the axis mundi, of quantum, i.e. of relativity, is a lie. And here's another thing. Every branch of science throughout all of history has thought that they have got it right. They know what's going on. And depending on the epoch of time, 100 years, 200, sometimes 1,000 years later. Oh, yeah, everything they thought they were right about was nonsense, rubbish, poppycock, twaddle. That's not my opinion either. That's a cold, hard fact. Every branch of science, we know what's going on. It's like, oh, whoops, no, we didn't. Sorry about that. So what are the implications? This changes the way everybody sees nature and naturans, or the way they see nature. If people understood what light actually is, and therefore the fundamental foundation of most things in nature, you know, we'd have an understanding of the interconnectivity of all things, because this atomistic idea that well, light's a photon, and you know, it's emitted kind of like <clears throat> cosmic flatulence from uh, energetic objects like stars and light bulbs and countless other... Don't you find it interesting that a super powerful star is emitting light at the same speed? It's not emitting light at all, nor does it have a speed. It's emitting light at the same speed as a super weak little candle. This is something Nikola Tesla him asked himself. He said, this doesn't make any sense. It's not possible unless you understand what light actually is, which is a sound wave in the ether. So we'd understand and have an under, uh, a, uh, a real view of the interconnectivity of all things and all people throughout the entire universe. That's not a New Age premise, just about interconnectivity. It's, well, if light is not an emission and it's just an ether perturbation modality, and all of these things are true about light, it's not a particle, it's not a duality, it's not an emission, it doesn't have a speed, oh, well... That being the case, and that logically explains everything, including instantaneous action at a distance, explains EPR paradox, explains an awful lot of stuff, then this means that people would have a common sense return to uh, cosmic mechanics. Like, wow, now everything is really simple. It makes sense. All these unicorn fart particles and leprechaun nonsense and uh, tachyons and uh, just all the nonsense we watched in Star Trek and Star Wars... Um, yeah, turn on the deflector array and emit the tachy <laughs> tachyon burst. Just all this rubbish, Adam. Everything was a particle problem with a particle solution. But the universe is not composed of particles. Light is not a particle. It doesn't have a speed. Light is not an emission. person in the pond, once again, flapping their arms as they're not emitting anything. It's creating disturbance in the medium. It's releasing energy. Because everything is pressure mediation. Talk about the release of energy is just another way of saying pressure mediation. Number three, we'd have an end to atomism and a return to rational Pythagorean physics. That's really, really important. Rational physics, heaven forbid, humanity, before it destroys itself, has a return to rational physics. This also, too, point number four, makes physics and metaphysics one thing again, vis-a-vis -vis the Platonists, Pythagoras, Plato, Iamblichus, Demetrius, Plotinus, Syrianus, Iamblichus, Porphyry, on and on and on. Rational. Metaphysics and physics are not two different things. The head side of a coin is not different than the tail side of a coin. It's all the coin. They were this way to begin with anyway. It's just humanity's ignorance and being lied to. You know, Mrs. Crabtree has been telling everybody that uh, quantum and relativity was right and light is a duality, it's an emission, a particle, a wave, a wave-particle duality, has a speed. All of this is rubbish, lies, nonsense, poppycock, and illogical twaddle. Lastly, number five, I can actually make a list like about 100 points long. It establishes an implicit wholeness for the entire universe. Everything becomes simple. Not simplex, but simple. Everything becomes interconnected. Everything becomes rational, sensible. 
There is something really missing in the past nearly 100 years, and that's rational physics, rational understanding of cosmic mechanics, which doesn't exist anymore. Today, it doesn't exist anymore. There are very, very, very few people with incredibly sharp minds that can say, you know, all this stuff is rubbish. You know, light cannot be an emission or a particle or a wave or a wave-particle duality. This is just nonsense. But everybody was taught um, this garbage growing up. What it does is it invokes separateness and autonomy. I'm all alone in the universe. You know, just there's a whole plethora of stuff that causes psychological issues, uh, societal issues, causes issues galore. You know, like, that thing is over there, it's emitting particles, and I'm over here, it's like, no, it's not emitting anything. It's creating a disturbance in the medium of which everything is the medium. Everything is just a different compounded variety of the medium itself. One thing I predicted years ago, I said that it'll be proven that the one fundamental particle is nothing other than super, super high energy light. Lo and behold, last year that was discovered. I predicted it years ago. I was proven right. Since the fundamental particle is something I've humorously termed hard light or super high energy light, the reconciliation of light and matter becomes destroyed. This makes the universe even more simple because Mother Nature doesn't have this over here and that over there. She has one implicit thing and they have different things as seen by human beings because they have different pressure modalities or energy um, uh, attributes, but these attributional differences don't change that they are of the same essa or essence, i.e. principles such as ice, water, and steam. Well, there's ice over there, there's water, so it's all water. That's the principle of all of these things. The conjugate field of the universe, the magnetic and the dielectric, dielectric being first, of course, are nothing other than the conjugate principles of the universe, and they themselves are the ether by definition. And then we have light. And then we have matter, but matter is no different than talking about ice versus water. Because fundamental matter, the one fundamental particle, is just super, super high energy light. So we have an implicit wholeness to the entire universe. Yeah, I know there's a book named called The Implicit Wholeness. I know the guy that wrote the book. Yeah, I, I know I'm not quoting his book because that people will hear implicit wholeness and they'll think of that, that New Age uh, book, but I'm... No fan of that book, nor of the author. I'm not going to mention his name. So, Anyway, think about that. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I do read every comment. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, any donations always warmly welcome in the description below, or you can tell me how much you hated it. Thank you.